As I lift off with our drone called Maverick, I fly over parts of Williams Creek that are very familiar to most of you. But the one thing that I can't help doing on this day is reflect back on how everything got started. 2014 was when Hawes really got into action. The wild horses were in serious trouble. The government had an agenda to totally eradicate the wild horses from the eastern slopes. We were all kind of oblivious to this until, of course, we rescued the first little colt we called Kai. And then we started looking into the wild horses and their plight. Something had to be done. I fly over this ridge. I just spot two wild horses down there on the lower left right now. And I think to ourselves how many horses we've found and how many horses we've lost. So here's Barb training up our next generation of the Hawes team. These are Frank's grandkids learning how to change out the camera cards and the batteries. Frank's a really good Hawes team member and beside him is Jackie and over there with the orange machine is Debbie. They just came out to help us this day. And now folks, back to the beginning. 2014, it was January 18th when we got a call from Carmela to come out and help rescue this little colt stuck in the snow. And right after that, the government was going to catch 196 horses from Williams Creek and the Sundry Zone. But this lady, Shannon Mann, was not gonna stand for that. She had me drive her out to Williams Creek and she was going to camp all by herself at minus 25 Celsius. And she I was going to monitor the, the wild horse capture. Oh, good. But I told Shannon she would freeze to death. So we set her up a camp. And quickly the word got out and more and more people were showing up. Shannon's kitchen right there. To form a resistance against this capture. On the messy side right now. <laughs> okay. Selfie! Oh my. <laughs> Let me see your chopsticks. Mm. <laughs> oh. awesome. Shannon, that is so funny. Did you make those yourself? Mm -hmm. Oh, you did? Why don't you see my spoon? <laughs> oh. It's so handy. Where's your spoon? Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, wow, that is nice. Let's have a look at the spoon. You whittled that yourself? Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's amazing what you can do. Good you for you. I know, right? It took me about an hour. <laughs> but cool. it works pretty well and it's all, you know, it's smooth. Yeah, smooth. yeah and you wash it every night? <laughs> like say. Get a little. There might be a little hummus. <laughs> and, I don't know. But it gets frozen on there. So it's Shannon is a very, very gutsy lady. And her and two other ladies decided to go and camp right in front of the capture pen to disrupt the horses being caught. And this was the infamous capture pen of Jason Bradley. Resistance to these captures had never really been tested in the past, but we were about to get tested. And as you can see, it didn't go very well that day when the police decided that we were too close to the capture pen. But this was crowned land, folks. We had every right to be there as well. So, we got Jan Arden involved, and Jan started signing prints of Wildies and advocating on our behalf, and things really started to take off. And this was Kai, our little colt that we rescued on January 18th, 2014. That was a brutal year for snow. It was very, very deep 
It was very hard on the horses. They have to paw through all of that snow to find food. It was really tough on them. As you can see, these horses went into the winter looking not too bad. But after a few months of that, folks, this is what we were finding when the snow disappeared many, many, many wild horses had starved to death. And the predators were cleaning up their remains for months. This was another horse that we had rescued that May in 2014, and both her and Kai were just infested with wood ticks. I took over 300 off each of those horses. So folks, after only 15 horses were captured, the call was called off. The resistance had succeeded. And this is what we have today. Now you have to really consider that Hawes and Woolworth and other groups not stood up and stood their ground. These horses would not even be here today. They would not be alive they would have been totally eradicated. So Haas began to learn more and more on this very steep learning curve. The government was learning more and more on the same steep learning curve. And before long, we were actually working together trying to come up with a long-term management solution. Some of the ranchers from the Rocky Mountain Forest Grazing Association really have caused us a lot of issues. Things are kind of quiet right now. I think everybody has kind of figured out that wild horses are going to be here to stay. There's enough grass out here for everybody, folks. The horses, the deer, the moose, the elk, and the cows. And thanks to our trail cam network, we've been able to prove many of the solutions are right at hand. We've got other critters out there that we see from time to time that we really enjoy. This is a young bull moose that's uh, visiting over here at Apollo spot. And it's a fairly frequent visiting spot for the moose. And a lot of folks think that these salt stations are just bait traps for uh, all of the wildlife, but that's just not so. They come and they go. They never just hang out. And so do the predators. They come and they go. Nobody ever hangs out here, folks. The only reason we put the salt blocks out is to keep these animals in front of the camera long enough to find out who is still alive and uh, who's new and who's missing. We've got a bit of a dry summer, so the water sources are a little bit lower, but we still have plenty for the wild horses and all the wildlife. It's been a while since we've seen Samson chasing that mare around and dog bone. And now the horses are coming through in a very calm nature. Every once in a while we get a really nice close look at some of their faces here. A lot of these horses are new to us. You know, realizing that there's uh, over 600 horses in the Sundry Zone alone. Uh, we get a lot of transients, but this guy's no transient. This is Shadow. Shadow has really had a lot of changes in his life in the last few years. He, he's had his own band with his own foals and mares. He's had a bachelor band. He then went rogue and a lone stallion for a while, and now he's hooked up with another stallion. 
and they've been together for several weeks now. So hopefully they'll hang out together for a while longer. Now Shadow just heard a big whinny down the way. <coughs> and he's going to go check that out. I don't think anybody ever gets tired of watching these horses. This is a really long movie today, folks. It's going to be over 43 minutes. And that's a long time for me to talk. But we always have lots to talk about and we always have lots to share with you. Good morning, Shadow. Good morning, buddies. Yesterday, Barb and I did a pre-dawn run out to another area where we have two cameras set up. And on the way in, we ran into Shadow and his uh, buddy Stallion. Now this is about four miles from where he was just on the previous cameras. But it's actually a very, very common spot to find him here. A little further up the trail, we ran into this band of horses that we don't know. There's one sub up there. Just one sub. But as usual, folks, what I really want you to pay attention to is the lack of foals. So this band had one sub-adult that we could see. And we know that we have really had a, a heavy loss this year in foals. There it is right there. It's only the only one young one that they had in this group. Now what I want you to realize, folks, is like I said, the horses don't hang out in a particular spot waiting for wolves and bears and cougars. They're always on the move, just like these two are. Now as you'll notice, they, they just walk right on past the salt blocks. It's not always about the salt. It's just that we happen to know where they travel and that's where we put our cameras. Now this is a very, very unusual rare sighting for us. There's three mares and three babies in here. This is extremely unusual for this summer of 2022 to have these babies survive. It's now the end of October and as you'll see this video was taken on the 11th of October. So pretty good chance that these guys are all still with us. Now this apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? And of course, back on October the 12th, we had this picture of Bo with his broken leg and we haven't seen him since, but others have. So we're hoping that he's still around and doing okay. This was October the 12th. And October the 13th, Barb and I showed up and we just missed him by one day. We always know that somebody's been around because the salt blocks get moved quite a distance sometimes. So we have to go out and kind of just keep putting them back. And of course, Barney, he's still awake over here on the Fox Run. And I decided to spend a little time here on this video, folks, with some of the predators we have out there. Most of you are pretty familiar with them now. Barney does get around. He travels about seven or eight miles in a day. And this is a bit unusual for us to see, of course, is this huge, huge pack of wolves, especially after we lost a dozen back in March to the trapper. So a lot of these are pups that have grown. And they're quite playful out here on this particular day. So obviously they're not too hungry.
This is really, really good footage, folks. I mean, where do you ever find this kind of stuff where the wolves are just playing like this in front of a camera? Now that's not to say that these guys couldn't turn a little bit sour on us here and actually start killing some foals again, but look at this young bull moose, he's back. And he's looking up the hill there. He knows that there's something not right. He's still looking at whatever he considers is a threat there. He's very wary. And now he's gonna he's gonna get out of here and watch very closely why. Right about now. There's a single wolf heading his way and right on his tail. These guys here, the lynx, they don't cause us too much trouble. Their main diet is just rabbits. And the same with the coyotes. This is a pack of coyotes. Now they can take down deer pretty easy and they can surely take down foals. Unlikely that they would be able to take down an adult horse. Here's some wolf pups here, soaking wet. And of course, here's that new camera station we just put in here, oh, about a week and a half ago. Barney made a visit. And there he is now up on another crossing. He gets around day and night. Now this is not Barney, this is a different bear. You can see he's quite a bit wider and thicker at a completely different location in the valley. We also at that same spot have a black bear hanging around. You can see the difference between the two bears and their features. This is the same black bear, just a different camera. And this is Barney again, way up at the other end of the valley. He's out on his night prowl, and I don't know how close you folks ever want to get to a grizzly bear, but is this close enough? I knew when I got out there something had snotted up the camera. I had to get the Kleenex out and clean the lens off. And Barney's on a trail that we use quite frequently here. This is Mama Grizzly and her cubs. These are the ones that kept chasing our wildies through the salt station there uh, a couple of months back, uh, viral videos that we had. And then back in June, sadly, we had to go out and put collared mare number 15, Isla, down. We had to actually end her life because of a serious, serious cougar attack. Her neck had been just torn to pieces by that cougar. And this is the good side. We got several calls from people to come out and put her down because they could actually see her spine. Many of you will remember that sad day when we had to go out and do that. But this is all that's left of her now, folks. So the, the bears are good scavengers and they will go out and clean up nature's uh, remains. There were seven different bears that fed on this uh, horse. But the good part is, is that we often think if, if we're providing a horse to the bears like this, it probably saved another horse that was doing fine and probably in the same valley. But we like all the animals here at Hawes. We like the wolves, and we like the bears, and the coyotes, and the skunks, and the fox, and especially the beavers. And here's a handsome loner that we see from time to time. It's Mr. Bond, James Bond. And the 
lynx back out again looking for a rabbit. Everybody knows who this is. Back on October the 22nd we had that uh, bit of a surprise snowfall pre-Halloween. Sterling's looking a mess and oh my goodness Barb you went past it again. How many times have you changed this camera and you don't know where it is? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> and she knows she got caught. Look at the smile. <laughs> oh, Barbara. And you can see that we're all kind of used to the snow here. It doesn't really bother us. We just get out and do our routine as usual. Fritz is looking pretty healthy, isn't he? We love this fox. He provides a lot of entertainment for us. And there's a mule deer doe. You can see the big, big ears and the white bum. Sometimes horses just aren't in a hurry, but they still have a place to go. Yes, you're a pretty mare, Belle. And we love it when they eat the grass along the fox run there. It gives us a better view of what Fritz is doing. Now here's Kalua and Rocco and Sasha. Kahlua is another foal that has made it so far. Beautiful, beautiful scenery up there. And Rocco is the one with the huge forelock that you've all seen in the past. You know, sometimes you just get an itch where you can't reach. And you don't have fingers that can reach back there. And so you just have to find another way to do it. So as we can see, these horses uh, back on October 20th still had a fair bit of grass along the ditches to eat. Now folks, this is totally amazing to me. That was Hannah. And this is Harley's uh, bay mare. And there's Harley. Now what is amazing is that he's on his way to the other end of the valley and he has never done that before. He has always hung out down around the old winter barn. So I'm not sure what the dynamics are here, but very, very interesting to see him up there. Sterling is still by himself, October 22nd. We were out on the 21st. And of course, there's still some stragglers up there at that end of the valley. But you know Hawes, they provide salt out there and it's not up to us to see who comes and licks on it. Now that's the bear boogie tree right there. Now we have another pack of wolves up at this end of the valley that um, I think there's probably about half a dozen in this pack. But notice the spot on the middle of the tails, folks. They have a black spot. Carmela pointed this out to us. Very, very interesting. And I can't really explain it, but every single one of these wolves has that same black spot right in the middle of the tail. Well, maybe there's some biologist out there that can uh, explain to us what that is all about or if it's even significant. It just seems strange that they all have it. So of course the fox always pees on our salt blocks and leaves the scent. And then the wolves come by and try to determine who's been there. It used to be that the Wolves would always pee on them right here. Now there's the bear boogie tree. That wolf smells something on that tree. 
It's where the cub always gets up and does his dance. It's a good thing we took all the little branches off of there, the eye pokers. A lot of the different animals use that now. But you can see this pack of wolves is just motoring through. They're in transit. And this is what they do all day long and all night long. They're always on the move. And that's why the wildlife has to be so alert. I believe that's Buck. Yeah, that's Buck uh, Bell's stallion. And again, they're not coming in for salt, folks. Well, they turned around from the creek, I guess, and came back up for some. Buck's got some terrible witch knots there. I'd love to be able to brush out, but it is what it is, and they're not really that tolerant to being haltered and brushed. I hope Belle gets to keep her baby next year. She's lost them now two years in a row. And this is kind of interesting, folks. You know, our wild horses, they still share the salt blocks with the cattle. But the cows don't really want to test them right now and they'll just move off to the side. So here's another really good look at uh, Rocco and Sasha and Kalua. Sasha is the darker bay mare. He's a handsome little colt. So isn't this interesting? Look who has to move over to the side now. It's very polite. There's Rocco again with that massive forelock. And Kalua looks like he's got a bullet hole right in the middle of his forehead. <laughs> but that's just a whirl. Look at the hair on this stallion. And that's when the snow actually started there on the 21st. So the 22nd was pretty white. Now, speaking of Harley and Hannah, here they are again, back at their normal hangout. So two days apart, and they were at opposite ends of the valley. That's pretty interesting. This is them again coming through on the other camera. I'm so glad that he got Hannah back. He did lose Star to Sabre, and I haven't seen them for a week or two, but at least he got Hannah back. And here's a real close-up of Hannah. And of course, we remember she lost her baby just within a couple of days also. Do you remember little Hayes over at the Winter Barn? He was so cute, and he had that little rippled bum. But let's see what happens again next year. That was actually the first baby we'd ever seen Hannah have. And of course, that bay mare there, she lost her baby right away this year too. One of the nice things about being retired, folks, is that whenever you feel like it, you can get on the back of your horse and get out into the foothills and spend a day just doing what you like to do. And I like wild horses, and I like doing the trail cameras, and I even like making movies for you. It's all just part of the things that we love to do. And this is our good friend Trent, riding ranger. And look at Ranger eating that moss. Now, I've never seen them do that before, but they just pick up that great big piece of moss and start munching on it. Very interesting. Oh, I forgot to tie up Patrick. Oh well, I don't think he's going anywhere. Trent is really, really starting to enjoy this kind of activity and pastime. Unfortunately, he's still working, so he doesn't get to come every time I want to go. But we're making a pretty good time out of it. 
That ranger, when we got him from the auction about 10 years ago, all he did was buck my ass off and he's become one of our better mountain horses now. Now this time we forgot to tie up ranger. So what I'm doing here is explaining to Trent that I see teeth marks on the salt block. And I am explaining to him that I can tell the difference be between whether it's a deer or a horse. Everybody thinks that these salt blocks are for the horse. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's laughing at me because I'm using the salt block for a mounting block. I thought it was actually pretty crafty. Here we are just making a pass through the old winter barn. And it's really nice that uh, Trojan has found the new winter barn. What a handsome dude he is. Trojan and Tia, one of our favorite pairs. Whoa, hey, somebody moved the furniture. These weren't here before. These horses all know what's on their trails and supposed to be there and not supposed to be there. But look at this, October 21st and we have a new baby. That's really exciting. I hope I see this one again on another camera soon. I'm not really sure who these uh, horses are, but they're really hard to tell at night. And in that same location that you just saw the new baby, here's Trojan coming by again and checking out the salt. Same with this wolf. They're all saying this is new. It wasn't here before. And everybody knows. Old Sterling's still by himself. It's only the 18th of October there, but that's just the way it is. He's usually by himself. Now here's Harley up at the other end of the valley. Remember it was the 16th when we saw him at the other spot? This is the 14th of October two days earlier, and they're way up here where Bo was. I've never seen him do this before. That's a long trek for him. Well, not a long trek for a horse, but longer than what we normally see them travel. And no babies with them. Unfortunately, they lost them all. And as Tia did, the last time we saw Tia's baby was right here. And if you recall, we named her Tiara. And she only got to be about three days old. Gosh, it's very sad when we stop and think about all the horses we've lost. White-tailed deer, they have to be just as wary as the horses. And meanwhile, back at the bridge, and back on October the 15th, we had the big wolf pack up here. You know, the stuff we learn from these cameras, folks, is just totally amazing. And I gotta tell you, you know, I've had filmmakers come and talk to me several times, and we start filming, and they keep telling us we're gonna make a documentary. But you know what, I think I've had it with them. You know, we just don't have the time to wait around and wait for those things to happen. I think we do a pretty good job on our own documentaries right here. And this satisfies me, and I believe it satisfies all of you. So I think we're just going to keep our nose to the grindstone here and not worry about who else wants to make a film for Hawes. We have so much stuff here in our hard drives that we could just do hours and hours and hours of footage. That little tree sure gets a workout, doesn't it? The mare first with her mane, and now this guy just has an itchy nose. 
That's the fella that was uh, sharing the salt block with the cattle. Here's Daniel again, and they're riding with their friends up at the north end here. There's uh, uh, the fellow with the big white beard that you saw. Lyle Stevenson is his name, and Carmela is walking her wild horse, Jackson. Jackson is seven years old now. Sterling's out again by himself. We are on the 22nd, and Sterling's in the snow, and we're out changing cards again on the 23rd. Barbara's smiling because she says, I know where this one is. So obviously you folks can realize that we got to love what we do to be out in all the different conditions. We go out in the rain, we go out in the wind, in the snow, in the sun, in the hot temperatures, in the cold temperatures. It never stops us. We're always out there finding out how the wild horses are doing and how many predators we have and how they're doing. There's Sterling coming back. This is one of the new winter barns. So as the horses determine where they are, they'll get a little wore in better. Sterling's got a buddy on this day. Look at this, he's having fun. This is Sam. This is Frank's grandson, and Sam actually helped us build that bridge. And that was Kahlua. And now Kahlua's at a different place that we call Lone Star's Hangout. And Rocco decides he's got an itchy neck. Yeah, there you go. Move the camera, Rocco. There's Kahlua. Isn't he just a handsome little colt? There's Sasha leaving the bush. Now, folks, this is extremely interesting. I thought this was Bell at first, but it's not. We don't know this band. There's just a little family here with a stallion, a mare, and a little colt. And I haven't seen them before. I don't know where they came from. I'm suspecting they came in from the west over the hills. But I mean, with a blaze like this, you would definitely recognize that, and I don't recognize it. So this mare looks a lot like Belle, but she's not quite as dark on the back end. She's very pretty, and I don't know how much she changes color from season to season. Perhaps some of the other photographers know who she is. Here's mom going over to check on baby, make sure everything's okay. And as you can see, this was back on the 19th, prior to the snow. Seems like a very content little family, doesn't it? Here we are up in the pines, and look at the wound, the old scar on the back of that guy. Belle, you're a little cranky today. Probably when it comes right down to it, we know who the boss is in that band. There's Cleaver. You know what, folks? We kind of lost track of Cleaver because our cameras got all fogged up. But you know, it's kind of interesting because Cleaver comes back on the scene here and he starts chewing in a spot only about a foot from the other spot. That's kind of interesting. There's still quite a bit of this tree left. He didn't get it all chewed up. And I don't know if uh, the wife come up to help or not, but he seems to have a big job on his hands here by himself. He also has to watch out because there's a cougar in that area that keeps looking for him. We've seen that cougar come by here a few times. He knows he can't haul that big piece, so you can see where he started chewing another hunk out of it. This camera provides a kind of an interesting view from time to time if we get a horse just standing the right way.
Trojan and Tia, a couple of our favorites, but look at this folks. Her eye looks good. The right one is the one that was injured. She looks just fine now. Good girl. What a beautiful face. We'll keep our fingers crossed for next spring. Well, Mr. Bond, I can't believe I'm seeing horses behind you. You are always by yourself. Something happened today that you're in close proximity to others. Well, let's have a little scratch on that boogie tree. Yeah, you guys look pretty good too. What are you watching? There must be another band of horses up there. There's our pack of wolves coming through again. This is October the 20th, just the day before Barb and I were out. So we always know they're in the area. You can see one laying down out there in the cut block. Hey, Freddy. What's new, Freddy? We're going to be leaving pretty soon here, Freddy, but we better have a look at you first. What are you trying to hide there? You stay out of the way of that raven. I can see you are way off in the back there. That's good. Because that raven, he would hurt you. He would eat you. Because he eats a lot of your food, too. Hey, you guys. This is that new family again, coming back in. There's Rocco, Kalua, and Sasha. And I know you're all going to remember those names now, aren't you? Well, I hope you all had a good time with the popcorn and the wine. That was probably a, about a three-cupper for coffee. It takes quite a while, folks, to gather up all the cards and review them and, and a couple of days to put a video together. And I'm not even sure how long it's going to take me to upload it tonight, but we're going to start here pretty quick. So the wild horses here on the eastern slopes of Alberta, they bid you farewell, as do we. We're heading back out again tomorrow to see what's new out in the West Country and bring the cards home and we'll start all over again. There's another video put up by Haas, folks. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one.